question recently. Cold crashing or sulfites? What's better for your mead? Find out how each method works and why choosing the right one can make all the difference in clarity and flavor. Before we dive in, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on the best tips and tricks for making amazing mead. And as a special thank you for watching, I'm giving away my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily. It's loaded with my step-by-step -step process and some advanced techniques to help you craft an exceptional mead. Stay tuned until the end of the video to find out how to grab your copy. Now let's jump in. Why choose cold crashing over stabilizers or vice versa? Cold crashing is natural. Let me preface that I generally cold crash my meads almost exclusively. I'm allergic to sulfites. I could smell them 100 miles away. Do not like them. Many people do. Big commercial uh, meaderies use them and it's acceptable. So why choose cold crashing over stabilizers? or vice versa. Cold crashing is a natural chemical-free process, making it ideal for those who prefer minimal intervention. It's also beginner-friendly, requiring no special equipment beyond temperature control. However, it doesn't entirely stop yeast, making it less effective as a standalone method for long-term stability. Cold crashing is a simple and highly effective way to elevate your mead by dropping the temperature of your fermentation vessel to 33 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or one to four degrees centigrade. You can naturally clarify and stabilize your mead. This process typically takes between two and seven days. I generally do it about 14 days. It causes the yeast and proteins and other particles to settle to the bottom, leaving you with a vibrant, crystal clear beverage. I usually rack out after that time and do it again and keep it in for another two weeks. I'm crazy like that. Clarity is one of the biggest reasons to cold crash. Cloudy meads result from suspended particles like yeast, proteins, and fruit remnants. These not only make your mead appear hazy, but can also subtly alter its flavor. By cold crashing, you allow these particles to settle without requiring expensive filtration systems. A clear mead doesn't just look better. It enhances the perception of quality, making it stand out whether you're serving it to friends or bottling it to compete. Cold crashing also preserves flavor. If the yeast remains in contact with your mead for too long, it can break down, a process known as autolysis, which releases compounds that cause off flavor. Cooling the mead stops this process, preserving the clean, crisp taste of your mead. This makes cold crashing an essential step for maintaining the integrity of your mead's flavor profile. Another major benefit of cold crashing is how much easier it makes racking and bottling. Once the sediment has settled out to the bottom of your vessel, it's far simpler to transfer the clear liquid without disturbing the solids. This not only saves time, but ensures that your final product is free from sediment and ready to enjoy. For those planning to back sweeten their mead, cold crashing is exceptionally useful. By slowing the yeast activity, cold temperatures reduce the risk of re-fermentation when sugar is added. While it doesn't completely stop the yeast, cold crashing sets the stage for stabilization. To fully prevent re-fermentation, combine cold crashing with stabilizers like potassium metasulfite and potassium sorbate. A typical dosage for these additives is 1 16th teaspoon of potassium metasulfite and a quarter teaspoon of potassium sorbate per gallon of mead. This combination halts yeast activity and protects against oxidation, ensuring a stable, long-lasting product. Stabilizers such as potassium metasulfide and sorbate offer precise control. These additives are essential for meads that are sweetened post-fermentation or intended for aging. They completely halt yeast activity, protect against oxidation, and ensure your mead remains sta stable over time. That said, they require careful measurement as overuse can affect the taste of your mead. As I said previously, many mead makers find the best approach is combining both techniques. Cold crash your mead to achieve clarity, then use stabilizers to ensure it remains stable for a long term. This method gives you the benefits of both natural clarification and reliable stabilization. Timing is the key when cold crashing. Start once primary fermentation is complete, usually after two to four weeks. Mine usually about 10 to 14 days. Rack your meat into a clean vessel, then drop the temperature to 33 to 40 degrees, as I previously said. Let it sit for 48 hours for best results. I tend to leave it for a week to two weeks. After cold crashing, 
Carefully rack your clear mead off the settled sediment into another sanitized vessel. This step ensures that you don't disturb the solids and keep your mead clear and polished. Ultimately, cold crashing is an invaluable step for crafting a high quality mead. It enhances clarity, preserves flavor, and simplifies racking, as I said previously a few times, and creates a professional looking final product. When paired with stabilizers, it also provides long-term stability needed for sweetened and aged meads. So whether you're making your first batch or refining your technique, Cold crashing is a straightforward and effective way to take your mead to the next level. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more mead making tips and techniques. And as promised, grab your free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily, in the description or the pinned comment below. It's packed with my step by step guidance and advanced techniques to help perfect your mead making ability. Ready to take your mead making skills to the next level? Whether you're refining your techniques, scaling your recipes, experimenting with new styles, or troubleshooting fermentation challenges, I've got you covered. Check out my other videos where I dive deep into everything from advanced methods to mastering flavor profiles. Click here to explore my mead making video playlist and gain all the tools you need to become a guild and creative mead maker.